Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to answer ratio questions in physics exams. These are the kind of question that might ask you to, for example, work out how many times greater the current in a wire would be if its diameter was doubled. There are lots of ways to approach these questions and you may already have a method that works for you, but I will show you a method that will always work. It can take a little longer, but it will get you the right answer in the end. Let's try the current question as an example. What would happen to the current in a wire if its diameter doubled? First, let's write out what we know and what equations may be useful. Don't worry if you haven't studied this topic yet. This video is all about a mathematical method rather than the physics of electric current. We know that voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. So changing the wire's diameter is going to affect that resistance, which will therefore uh, affect the current. The voltage is going to be constant for a particular power source. The resistance will be affected according to the equation resistance equals resistivity multiplied by the wire's length divided by the cross-sectional area of the wire. And we know that cross-sectional area for a circular cross-section would be equal to pi r squared, which, since we're dealing with diameters, is equal to pi times the diameter squared divided by 4. So what we need to do here is combine these together into one equation for current. So let's begin by substituting the area equation into our resistance equation to give us r equals rho l divided by pi d squared divided by 4. If we have a denominator within the denominator, one trick you can learn is that the denominator at the bottom there will move up into the numerator of the, the big fraction. So that becomes 4 rho L divided by pi d squared. So that's our equation for resistance. Now we want to have an equation for current, so we know that I equals V divided by R. So let's substitute in our equation for R to get V divided by 4 rho L divided by pi d squared. And again, the denominator here can move up to leave us with V d squared pi divided by 4 rho L. Now let's think about what we actually know from this question. We know that the diameter of the wire is doubled, so d2, the diameter of wire 2, is going to be equal to 2 times d1. All of the other values we, we have here, voltage, resistivity, length, and of course pi, are constants. They're not changing between the two wires. That will be important later. So what we're trying to find is the ratio of the current in the second wire to the current in the first wire. So I2 divided by I1 will, will tell us how many times bigger the current in cable 2 will be compared to the current in the first wire. So if I2 divided by I1 is what we're interested in, this means that we can substitute I2 and I1 for the equation that we formed earlier. So let's begin by having V D2 squared, so the diameter of wire 2, multiplied by pi, divided by 4 rho L, all divided by, same thing again, but this time, V D1 squared pi, divided by 4 rho L. Notice that if any of these other values were changing from cable 1 to cable 2, for example, if the length was also changing, we would have to put L1 and L2 here, but because they're constants, we can just leave them as L. They're the same for both wires. So again, let's do our trick from before, where uh, the, the denominator down here can move up to the top, and the denominator from the top can move down, and that will just tidy up our equation a little bit, and we'll end up with V d2 squared multiplied by pi 
multiplied by 4 rho L divided by V D 1 squared pi multiplied by 4 rho L. So all we've done so far here is simply divide I2 by I1 and substitute in our equations for I so that we now, ha we now have an equation in terms of D, the diameter. Now you notice that the next step should be quite simple. We can cancel a lot of these values. V we have on the top and the bottom, so we can cancel the Vs. Pi is on the top and bottom, we can cancel those. We can also cancel the 4s, the rows, and the Ls. So this leaves us simply with the equation I2 divided by I1 is equal to D2 squared divided by D1 squared. And since we know that D2 is equal to 2D1, we can substitute the D2 for D1. So that's 2D1 all squared divided by D1 squared. And if we now square our brackets there, that's going to produce 4D1 squared divided by d1 squared. Once more we can do some more cancelling. We now have d1 squared on the top and on the bottom, so those cancel, leaving us with a final answer of 4. So this means that the current in wire 2 divided by the current in wire 1 is equal to 4. So in other words, the current is 4 times larger. Let's try this method with another problem. This time we have two wires made of the same material and both of those wires are experiencing the same force. The only difference is that wire 2 has got half the diameter of wire 1 and wire 2 is also half the length of wire 1. It'll be a little bit easier later if we write those out as D1 equals 2D2 and L1 equals 2 L2. So we're going to follow exactly the same steps as before. Again, if you don't yet know this physics, don't worry. This me method is about the maths rather than uh, the physics itself. So the uh, Young modulus of uh, a material is E equals stress divided by strain, where stress is force divided by cross-sectional area and strain is extension divided by the original length. So we can combine those equations together to produce one equation here. E equals, so that's the Young modulus is equal to force multiplied by length divided by the cross-sectional area multiplied by the extension. We also know that, that cross-sectional area again is pi d squared divided by 4. So let's combine these into one equation in terms of extension delta L. So the extension of our wire is going to be equal to the force multiplied by the original length divided by the cross-sectional area multiplied by the Young modulus. So if we replace the cross-sectional area we'll get FL divided by pi d squared E divided by 4 and again we can put the 4 up to the top so 4FL divided by pi d squared E. So we want to find out how much greater the extension of wire 2 will be compared to wire 1 so what we're looking for is the ratio extension of wire 2 divided by the extension of wire 1. So if we now substitute those two extensions for our equation up here, we're going to get 4F L2. So F is just F because the forces are identical on the two wires, so we don't need to worry about that. But the length is different, so we need to have L2 there. Divided by pi D2 squared multiplied by E. Again, E 
is a constant here. These wires are made of the same material, so they have the same Young modulus. So we take all of that and we divide it by the same equation again, but this time using the values for wire 1. So this is going to be 4 F L1 divided by pi D1 squared multiplied by E. And once more we can uh, tidy our equation up by uh, moving the denominators around. So we get 4 F L2 multiplied by pi D1 squared E all divided by 4 F L1 pi D2 squared E. So once more we can cancel here, we can cancel our 4s, we can cancel our Fs because the force is the same on both, of course we can cancel pi and we can cancel our E's because they're the same as well. So that leaves us with L2 D1 squared divided by L1 D2 squared. And if we now substitute our values in from, from uh, the beginning, this gives us L2 multiplied by 2 D2 squared, all squared, divided by 2 L2 multiplied by D2 squared and if we uh, square out our brackets there we'll get 4 L2 D2 squared divided by 2 L2 D2 squared we can now do our final bit of, uh, of cancelling, we'll cancel out our L2s and our D2 squareds and that leaves us with 4 divided by 2 which is equal to 2 which is our final answer. The extension of wire 2 will be double the extension of wire 1. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.